You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Hello, everyone. I am Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News, FM 104.5, 106.1, and live streaming Facebook Live on Conroe Culture News and IRLoneStar.com. Our guest today will be Commissioner of Precinct 2, Charlie Riley, and with him will be Bruce Berger, Chief of Staff. So this show is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic and Team Sinisi Real Estate Group. Roger Stein Chiropractics is located at 3033 West Davis by Conroe High School and Taco Bell. They have been voted uh, Montgomery County's best chiropractic center for four consecutive years, and they treat everyone from infants to seniors and athletes to professionals, weekend athletes, that is. Their, their focus is on natural holistic healing without surgery to achieve optimal health. So, uh, Roger Stein Chiropractic. Other sponsor is Team Sinisi Real Estate Group. And if you don't know yet, where have you been? Real estate is hot. Hot, hot, hot right now. Best rates, interest rates ever. So, if you're looking to invest, if you're looking to sell or buy a new home, call Team Sinisi because it's an easy name to remember. Ha ha. 281-507-9777. So, what's going on all around us? Well, I can tell you. Hello, Dolly is being performed by Christian Community Theater, and that opens up this coming weekend, August 13th through the 22nd at the Crichton Theater. You can find out more information at CrichtonTheater.org. There is a wearable art and home decor trunk show the whole month of August at the Conroe Art League in downtown Conroe. And, believe it or not, school is starting. School is starting all over, so be ready for that. And if you haven't done your school shopping yet, you can still shop in downtown Conroe. Main Street Merchants and Sweet Texas Treasures have the trendy styles for your high school or college student. The Assistance League has fashions for everyone, including backpacks and some school supplies, and they also give back to the community. They are a nonprofit, believe it or not, so you can take any of your items there to be resold and uh, help our vulnerable populations you can get your hair cut pixie on main switch hair studio or the oldest barbershop in texas shepherd's barbershop did you know that they opened in 1912 amazing so they are still running hard and go celebrate the kids going back to school with a lunch go to red brick tavern vernales new orleans New Orleans Bakery, Honor Cafe, Carmelita's, Pacific Yard House, and breakfast is served every morning at Vernell's, Red Brick Tavern, and Honor Cafe. So another exciting news, (laughs) Foss Brewing is getting ready to open up their brew house in downtown Conroe. There's lots of things going on. So they just got in new equipment and tanks, so they are getting ready for their first batch of beer, and that will happen the end of September. So save the date for the Sunday Fun Day Stroll to benefit Bridgewood Farms on September 19th, which is a Sunday, that's why it's Sunday Fun Day, from 2 to 5 p.m. And that uh, they are the oldest nonprofit in Montgomery County. They were established in 1967, so I guess that makes them like 54, 54 years old. So you can purchase a ticket for $50 to taste wines, cocktails, and beer from the local venues. Vernell's New Orleans Bakery will be having a cake tasting during that time too how fun is that so you can walk around and you can taste beer from hopefully well foss brewing if they're open other than that you can do cocktail tasting at 202 main uh be winery will have wine tasting the firm meadery will have their fermented by made with honey wine tasting and uh, they're also bringing in um Bernhardt Winery will probably be at the Red Brick Tavern. The Corner Pub will be open for this. And it all benefits Bridgewood Farms. It's even going to be a silent auction at Brownlee's Jewelry Store made with 10 items made by the clients. So it's a wonderful thing. Uh, they had to uh, cancel their biggest fundraisers in 2020 and 2021. And this really benefits the clients with special needs. So go to bridgewoodfarms.org to find out more about that. And every fourth Thursday of the month is the sip shop and stroll in downtown Conroe from 5 to 10 p.m. 
if you like bingo, <laughs> there's bingo every Thursday and you win a bottle of wine from Blue Epiphany Winery. So much going on. Live music every Friday and Saturday nights at 202 Main, the Firm Meadery, the Corner Pub, and Blue Epiphany Winery downtown. So with that, we're going to take a quick break and be right back with Commissioner Charlie Riley and Bruce Berger. Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic, led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity-verified chiropractic clinic. Call 936-441-9990 for an appointment or visit rogerssteinchiropractic.com. That's R-O-D-G-E-R-S-S-T-E-I-N, chiropractic.com. Team Sinisi is a proud sponsor of Conroe Culture News. Vinny Sinisi and his professional team provide comprehensive real estate services throughout the greater Montgomery County area and beyond. Whether looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, Team Sinisi has an impeccable reputation. Contact Team Sinisi for a great experience at teamsinisi.com. That's T-E-A-M-S-I-N-I-S-I.com. Hey y'all, it's DJ Mike from Dance Simon, Texas. Join me Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. as I count down the top 10 Texas Red Dirt songs that are packing the dance floor. I'll be featuring local artists and the story behind the hits, shows in the area, as well as new songs that make you want to dance. It's Dance Time in Texas with DJ Mike on Lone Star Community Radio, 104.5 KCZW and 106.1 KZCC, Conroe, Texas, or online, IRLoneStar.com. Hey, I am Margie Taylor, your host for the show today, and my guests today are Commissioner Charlie Riley, Precinct 2, and we also have Bruce Berger, his Chief of Staff, and we're going to talk a few things about what's happening in Precinct 2, what projects have been completed. Um, I mean, he is an elected commissioner, so we want to know what's going on and what's coming up ahead, and then we're going to talk about some special events as well. Does that sound good, Charlie? Sounds great to me. Okay, so uh, thank you both for coming in today. So what's going on in Precinct 2? Have you been to Precinct 2 lately, Margie? I have. I so was there know Tuesday. What's going on. <laughs> if it's happening anywhere, it's happening in Precinct it, 2. It, it is happening. It's amazing what's going on in Precinct 2. It's amazing the road projects and the and the projects we've been able to complete, uh, what that's done to the precinct, what that's done to that part of the county. Uh, and I guess one of the biggest changes, one of the biggest accomplishments, I guess, is going to be the 249 tow road through Montgomery County Precinct That's two. a big project. It's changed the whole side of this county. It, and it will continue changing this whole side of the county for the next 30 years or more. Uh, all the road improvements that we've been able to do, we've done everything on our road bond uh, list that we said we was going to do. We've done those, plus we've done a few extra because we saved uh, some money on a few projects, so we were able to do a few more little so projects. So you reallocated to other things we that took, need to be done. Yes, ma'am. We took some of that road bond money, and we, we found, uh, funneled it to other projects that we needed to do. We just weren't sure we, we were, able, were going to be able to do that. So we've done more than what we have told people we were going to do, and we're through with our boat, our road bond project. So that's fabulous news. Um, it, it was a really, it, it was exciting time to be able to do that, uh, and we we put things on the ground that have tremendously helped not only mobility in precinct two, but the safety and the quality of life. You know, that's we got the most important stuff. We 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 built Grand Pine Road uh, from Nickel Sawmill over to twenty nine twenty. Uh, getting into Harris County, and I've had people tell me that that saved anywhere from 15 to 35 minutes on their way to work and the way home from work. And that matters. So if I could get 35 more minutes going to work or 35 more minutes when I get home and I can spend with my family, that's big. Absolutely. And I can't, time. I can't tell you what uh, 249 has done. I can tell you what it's done for me, 
uh, I can get the HGAC down in uh, Greenway Plaza down about 55 minutes instead of two hours and 10 minutes. So all of that means something to me. My time is valuable. Everybody's time is valuable. How much time do you spend on the road daily, uh, weekly? You know, I, I, I put somewhere around 55,000 miles a year on my truck. So I don't know how to tell you're you. All, you're always everywhere. moving. Yes. You're moving throughout yeah. your precinct. I don't all sit around the, time. the office. I don't sit around the office in front of the computer. No, I've called in, there and you're never there. Or in, or in front of the <laughs> TV. No, I, you I, don't. I, I, I'm out. I, I love to get out and about. That's what it's about. You know, uh, I love to go see the project, but I love to go talk to the people. Uh, it's not pleasant always, but but I think. The way we approach things is we try to help people, and we'll tell people right off the bat, I can't help you. I can't do what you want me to do. And sometimes that don't set well. But if I Well, just, and a lot of people think you're responsible for a lot more than you really are, for correct? everything, yes, for everything. Mm-hmm. But if I go in there and tell somebody I may be able to do something, knowing all along I can't do it, I haven't done anything for you or me or anybody else, so I don't believe in doing that. And I think people... I think people appreciate that they may not tell me right then but i've had several people that said you know i remember when you came out here and told me you cannot do that and i was mad as i can be uh you know two years later they'll come up to me and say you know you were right you couldn't do it i had to take care of it i had to find somebody else to take care of it and uh I get that all the time, so I think that's the only way to operate. But you do uh, share information as where they can get resources yes, or yes. who they need to contact. Or where you need contact. to try to go or hear, Correct. talk to these folks. Or Nine times out of ten, if somebody wants me to do something on their property or behind their property that I can't do. But I do try to direct them in the right place. You what know, seems to be the biggest issue? The biggest issue is drainage on right. somebody's property. Uh, we're responsible by statute from the state we've got the road and the roadside ditches that's all we we cannot get out of that right away so Mm -hmm. flooding things like flooding if people buy a piece of property and 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 i'll be honest with you somebody will buy a piece of property from somebody and i said well the county is going to come in and take care of that they just haven't done it yet well what does that mean that means you bought a piece of property thinking i'm going to come in and fix it after you move in and I can't. So who are you mad at? You're not mad at that guy. You're mad at me because I told you I can't do it. Mm-hmm. So And that happens all the time. And that's little bitty things, Margie, but those little bitty things can grow into big things. Right. And they do sometimes. And that's just not right. Right. Have you had any issues with um, the water as far as the whole SJRA, Lone Star Conservation, any of that? You know, um uh, we deal with that just very, very little bit. Uh, we don't, we don't, we try not to get involved in, in the people's water. I, I know that, that that's may not, not really a big issue. That, that may you. not sound yeah. right. I don't want people paying this kind of money for water, but there's absolutely nothing I can do about it right now. Right, right. And I, I, don't, like, I don't like that. The water issue is a big It is a big thing issue. Too. Uh, the subsidence and all of right. that. And, and we got to pay attention to that. I mean, you got two different stories being told by two different groups. And I'm and, and there, uh, one of them can walk in my office and lay that out there, and you can't understand most of it because we're not all hydrologists or we're not all. But they can tell you all these numbers and tell you all these figures. It sounds great, and then the next bunch comes in and said, "Don't pay attention to their numbers. They're all wrong. Here's the right numbers." It takes a long time to figure all that. All we know is we don't want subsidence. We don't want we don't <laughs> want that, and we don't Bottom want line. to be paying as much money for the water right. as we are right now. We Correct. want some improvements. Right. And I think they're all For working. For those in the, that use the water usage the most. They are trying to work in the right direction. They're, it's just going to take some while, a while to get that done. Okay. And okay. I think the best thing for maybe us to do as commissioners and maybe the county is get out of their way for a while till they get it figured out, and then let's see if we can do whatever they need us to do. Can't we all just get along? No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you. So uh, the biggest areas of the concern are 1774, 1488, and 2978, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty much yes. in your area. Yes. Which one has had the best improvement, or have they all been improved roadways? Uh, no, they have not. 1774 has probably had the best improvement as far as completion-wise through Montgomery County from Pinehurst. All the way to Grimes County, they've had they've got the road widened, four lanes, turn lanes. They've got all that done, and they're going 
from Montgomery County, they're going all the way through Grimes County up to the 249 toll road as we speak now. So mm -hmm. that wasn't even planned. But again, that's something else that the 249 toll road has changed. Mm -hmm. 249 toll road wasn't even supposed to be in the Grimes County till next year. Sometimes the end of 2022. So we're about a year and a half ahead. That's or we're fabulous. Late. So when we did that, well, TxDOT agreed to go from uh, Montgomery County at least up to the tow road. It just makes sense. You're going to have people getting off the tow road on 1774. Why well, have a two-lane road when we got the money to make it a four-lane road, move stuff around, make that four-lane coming into Magnolia? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So they've agreed Absolutely. to do that. Uh, 1488. I hate 1488. Well, <laughs> I hope you don't have to hate it very much longer. Uh, it's a mess. They, are, they are working Anywhere. on the west side of Magnolia from Waller County back to Magnolia. They've got the right-of-way done. They've already cleared the right-of-way. They're putting pavement on the ground now. That should be done by the first quarter of next year or maybe the middle of next year. But the good thing about that, everything we've done around Magnolia on that side of the town or that side of the county I think TxDOT has looked at it like, you know what, maybe we need to go further. So what TxDOT's done since that's going, they've agreed to go from uh, Waller County line all the way to 290 with the, the widening project. That wasn't even on the books. That wasn't even in sight. So they've agreed to do that. Uh, and then the section from Mill Creek up to Magnolia headed west, they've, they've got the right of way purchased. They should start working on that section of road first quarter of next year. So you'll have the west side done by maybe the middle of next year, the, the, the section from Mill Creek or Magnolia High School up to the railroad tracks in Magnolia will start uh, construction the beginning of next year. So there's a lot going on, and, and I know it's going to be a mess while all this construction is going on, but just think what it's going to be there's like light. when it's done. There's it, light at the end of the tunnel. And it's not as far as everybody thought it was going to be when they Because I know at, at heavy meeting times it gets – really bad whether it's on the west side of 1488 or the east side well it's it's the crazy. west side right now is the worst side uh headed from 40, uh, 45 into magnolia and i'm gonna uh i'm gonna make a statement that uh the the traffic signals every time you put one in it's not always the best thing to do <laughs> uh, it that just aggravates me to no end i know we have to have traffic signals at 1488 and 249 but just because the book says if you got a tow road and a farm to market road intersecting, this is how you do it. Hmm. That don't work, not all the time, and it's not working in Magnolia. So, I've been in contact with TxDOT for the last two months trying to get something done, and I, I finally got those guys to agree to let our signal technician from Montgomery County go out and tweak the light. And he did it this morning, and guess what? Wow. Half the traffic went away. I've really? Been, I've been telling them that for two months. I mean, it does. When you it, think about it, it does it, collect pretty, traffic because everybody sits at the signal. But what <laughs> so, what, what, uh, know. what bothers me is these, and I, look, I, I'm not knocking That's where anybody. you need to have your campaign signs where everybody's People, sitting in the signal well, and waiting. <laughs> I don't want them sitting in the signal way. I don't. No, I know. I know. But I, we, we drive that, it every that's day. It's a good visibility place, you know. <laughs> we drive it every day. So when we call them and say, hey, you, maybe you need to do this, they look at their book, what it's supposed to be. But it ain't working. We're telling them it ain't working. Come look at it. So they finally agreed, and he went out there and worked on it this morning, and I will be out there this evening between 5, th five and 6 o'clock to see if Go it's check any better. check it out. And I guarantee it's going to be better. I know it will. Well, that's important, too, Charlie, is to go out there and really have feet on the ground to and know. not just listen to what people say, but go right. check it out yes. for yourself so you really know and we is it working. It. We're here. You know? Now, the worst text dot job going on right now is 2978. That, yes, that's that, a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. But it's been a mess. There's light at the end of that tunnel, too, because uh, I just got an update from text dot this morning. I've been trying to get something from them about what's going on. It doesn't look like anything's happening. Well, it's happening. They're working on the bridge over Dry Creek, so the crews are underneath the bridge taking care you know they've got the deck on they got everything done but now they're doing some stuff under everybody's underneath so they can't do a whole lot of they can't get to do a whole lot of paving until they get that exactly like they need it then they come back and pave so mm -hmm. that's almost done 
Uh, they've so that's got, the backstory that people don't know. They don't know. Nobody's working out here. Because they're hiding underneath. They're hiding. <laughs> that's right. I mean, I had I faced the same thing on Fish Creek when. Uh, yes, you know, I know about a, Fish Creek. That's a, a seven hundred. And that's foot, pretty. That looks good. It's perfect. It's seven hundred foot bridge, so you get the decking and get everything done, so you're ready to pour concrete or you're ready to to, to your asphalt. Well, wait, we got to get everything from here up to that to make sure the bridge don't fall down. We start running over it, so everybody's underneath it. That's the part nobody knows. And and uh, people. You need to tell that story more often. How do you? you, you you find a good PR person. That's all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, so. and people just don't—they don't, they they don't want, know because you know. only know what you see. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, so, everybody's gone. There, nobody's working anymore. That's right. Well, well and part of that was Charlie. We'd get calls and we'd say, "Well, there's water under there right now. It hadn't rained here." And it's like, yes, but it's got the uh, Lake Creek is a three hundred thousand acre. It's watershed. still here it's underneath. Not here. Yeah. <laughs> but people don't know. They don't, they know. don't see. They right? Don't. You're right. You're exactly right. You know? So but I mean, at the end it was, you completed it very well. It, it's it, a great it, road to it travel. It's longer on, than what it should have. And everybody who lives out there, I mean, the other st- part of the story is now everybody's happy, right? Yeah, but we, we don't that? hear that part. We we never get all the phone calls about, hey, thank you for that. We know That's what you went. No, we don't. Pretty much. Life. And again, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I understand. I mean, that. I'm not looking yeah. for a pat on the back. I just want to get the jobs done. And you make want to get it, them done. You want to do what for, you're supposed to be doing. Make in it better your for the office. people in that area. And I think we have made it. I say it all the time. That's the prettiest drive from 1488 up to uh, 105 that, in the county. It really is. I think it is. Well, we're going to take a little break and then come back uh, more about what you're working on and your upcoming projects and uh, your event as well. So we'll be right back. I am Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News. Team Sinisi is a proud sponsor of Conroe Culture News. Vinny Sinisi and his professional team provide comprehensive real estate services throughout the greater Montgomery County area and beyond. Whether looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, Team Sinisi has an impeccable reputation. Contact Team Sinisi for a great experience at TeamSinisi.com. That's T-E-A-M-S-I-N-I-S-I.com. Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic, led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity-verified chiropractic clinic. Call 936-441-9990 for an appointment or visit rogerssteinchiropractic.com. That's R-O-D-G-E-R-S-S-T-E-I-N chiropractic.com. Have a legal question? Are you a resident of Montgomery County? Call 281-645-6344 to talk to a volunteer attorney from the Woodlands Bar Association. We answer the phones on the first Monday of every month at 281-645-6344 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. to provide general legal information and information about legal resources to Montgomery County residents. Hello, I'm Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News, and uh, I am sitting here with Commissioner Charlie Riley, Precinct 2, and Chief of Staff for Precinct 2, Charlie Riley, Bruce Berger, and we were talking about uh, road projects that have been completed, and uh, Charlie, you wanted to add some more information about a project that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, one of the, one of the uh, real big projects, I think, for the folks around Port, uh, 45 and 242 is the third direct connector that me and Commissioner Metz have teamed up to uh, uh, sponsor and fund the construction of. That's the flyover going northbound on 240, uh, 40, 45 to eastbound 242. All of us have been at that intersection 
trying to go east on mm-hmm. 242 or even go west on 242. Usually we try to go a different way. <laughs> yes, try to av- stay away from it. Yeah. Uh, what this, what I think this is going to do is going to, it's going to completely clean up that intersection because most people are trying to go out east uh, on 242. If you sit there and look at that intersection, but but the beauty part of this, me and me and Commissioner Metz had agreed to fund the overpass. Well, TxDOT called us here again. It seems like every time we do something, TxDOT takes notice. I, I'm just saying. That's good. You're or doing not. this. I don't know. <laughs> you're doing this, but we've got this project we need to do. Why don't we do them at the same time? Which makes sense. It does. They've got a drainage uh, uh, project they need to do. So I'm sure everybody's aware that the service roads at 242 and 45 sometimes go underwater. Uh, and that that's not good for anybody when you're trying to get to either one of these hospitals on that intersection. You know, yes, they're Meth- all around Methodist, there. Yeah. Uh, Texas Children, Herman, they're all there. So they came to us and said, let's try to combine these. They had about a $15 million project. Well, our flyover is about $15 million. Let's do them all together. So what their project consists of is taking the drainage problem that's on the east uh, west side of the uh, service roads and going underneath the service roads and 45 to a new detention pond on the east side of 45. But during that project, they also are going to take care of the service road problem. They're going to add two turn lanes, two right turn lanes on the service road going east on 242. Because, look, there's a lot of stuff right there where people don't want to take the flower. They do need to go east to some of the commercial development. Mm-hmm. That are right there. Right. Yeah. So, and then we've been talking to them for the last two, two and a half years. Uh, we've had meeting with TxDOT. Uh, we've had the chamber, Woodlands Chamber. Uh, we've had people talking mm-hmm. about the northbound service road from Tamna Road up to 242. Now, it's hard to explain. Some of the road is a three-lane road. But when you get to on and off ramps, they, they choke it down to two lanes mm-hmm. to let people get on and off, and then they open it back up. They do that about three times. So that's all your area, too? Or is it four? That's four. But, okay. But I kind of took the lead on this, kind of looking like if you made this three lanes, people know how to merge. I don't think you're doing a whole lot of good by moving people over. I may be wrong, but they agreed. So they're going to make that a three-lane service road from – Tamna Road all the way to 242. Hmm, that's that, good. That stops all this. That's good. Cramming it. There, there's a lot of congestion yes. over there. So that will stop some of that. So that I mean, is, you got the restaurants and the whole other so when you, uh, new developments that are happening over there. When you choke it down to two lanes and somebody wants to turn right, well, then you've really made a uh, congested spot. Leave it open. Let mm-hmm. the guys turn. Let them go. Let them, I always say, let traffic go where they need to go and they'll they will take care of your congestion most of it quit drawing quit drawing arrows and lines and telling people what they got to do they know what they need to do people can't drive if it ain't painted or there's not a sign anymore well you know what's really hard is when you are going on the feeder road uh, to get on 45 going northbound mm-hmm. you immediately get in the lane that takes you to 242 to go over and you have to hurry and shift over yeah. two lanes yes yeah. um which can be scary. <laughs> you know, you got to move fast. Yeah. Of course, if you have a fast car, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> makes or, it a little or a fast truck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, that's um, could be dangerous. It could be dangerous, but I think these improvements will will help. They will clean up that intersection. And right now, when when I first started talking about two forty two. In 45 intersection i met with uh, uh again the woodlands chamber and there was a lot of folks in the room the the chairman of methodist hospital uh texas children herman we were all in the room mm-hmm. and i didn't i kept hearing about ambulances are having a hard time to get to the hospital mm. and i thought well i don't want to be but then the director from texas children looked me right now and said when your kid or your grandkids sick what do you do I throw them in my truck and I take off to the hospital. Well, my truck don't have horns on it, lights on it, sirens. So an ambulance has a hard enough time getting through. How is that mama or that daddy getting through there to get that kid to Texas Children in a regular car? I ain't going to be the guy. I don't want to be the guy where somebody couldn't get there and either. 
I don't even want to It's say just it. not a good thing. It's not a good situation. Yeah, yeah. So and I, and that's for that reason me. alone, it That's it bothered needs me to be, for the last five years. It's it's something's got some, to be done. Something's got to be changed because that's the hubbub for yes. all of our yeah. little medical center. Yes. You know, um, there, there's a lot of hospitals right there. Everything. Right and there. it's great because then you don't have to go to downtown it's Houston. Great unless you can't um, get there. Unless you, well, Yes, that's, that's true. That's, that's not good. That's, that's and true. I want to pass over too quickly on the point you made is that, no, the majority of this is not in Commissioner Riley's precinct. It's in Commissioner Metz's precinct. Right, but and that's why I was wondering. Well, you know what? It's Somebody's got to take the lead and start, from the, right? From the day one, he told me when I came to work here, use common sense. Well, that was an issue that needed to be tackled, and it needed Commissioner Riley. I know you want to be humble, but it has to be said. It, this is not in his precinct, but it was an issue that needed to be addressed. We have great working relationships with Commissioner Metz. He and Commissioner Riley were able to put their heads together, work together, and even though it's outside the precinct, the majority of this, it's still a huge need that affects everyone. It's in more this teamwork yes. than everybody just do he, your own thing. Well, and, and I you really need that. I appreciate Commissioner Metz by listening and to say, and and he just told me, "You take the lead. Just just let me know what we're doing." And that that's the kind of that's what it takes to get things done. I mean, I could have sat right there and said, "Hey, that's not my precinct. That's Metz. Go see him." What well, what is that done? That and and that's nothing. the value of. All the commissioners working together too. Yes. You know, uh, because you all vote on things together. You don't say, "Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's not my area." <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. you you work together. Plus, you also have the experience of being there and have the probably the the relationships that he may not have because he's a new that's commissioner, right. right? I had a good relationship with the uh, uh, Woodlands ch uh, Chamber. I've got a good working relationship with most of the people in the Woodlands. To be honest with you, I really do. And I enjoy working with Well, and people. that's important. Relationships really do matter. It is. I mean, it kind of helps the process along a little bit faster and a, more efficiently. Again, I have to work with the city of Shenandoah. we got a great working relationship. Magnolia, Montgomery, Conroe. I mean, that's what it takes to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. uh, O'Conroe Road, it's, it's a, that's a booger bear of a project, and I'm glad the city of Conroe's taking that on because it is a it's – a, it's a, monumental task of what they're trying to do but uh, again one of those text dot deals uh you know they're talking six to eight to ten years before they can even really start working on O'Connor road really? O'Connor road can't wait that long with all the stuff that's going on so that's going to go into 105 right yeah or not? from okay. 1488 across san jacinto river across lake creek going into sergeant ed hokum boulevard right on the loop you know that's if everything we need that we need it we but, need that if, if way they started to get right through. Now today, by the time they they do the right of way and try to and they try to do the environmental assessment and they try to do all their design and get everything done hopefully within six years they're doing something but that's mm -hmm. i hope they're doing that before then mm -hmm. but when i go out there and i drive up and down the road and i see 45 or 50 cars sitting at 1488 and o'connor road trying to turn left I can't wait six more years. I can't. I can't wait another month. So, Lots of development so over there. Yeah. Uh, we kind of told Text Dot what we wanted here again. Kind of told Text Dot, hey, this is what. This is. We kind of said this is what we want to do. We kind of said this is what we're going to do. Bruce is laughing. Well, <laughs> well, again, when you have that kind of relationship with Text Dot, you can you can do a few things, and they anyway. You can be a little spunky. Yes. So okay. I told him, I said, look, I'm going to put a right turn lane. I'm going to put another lane in. I want you to make sure your your lights are right. I'm not going to do anything out in your right of way that's going to foul things up. It's just not going to look like your standard intersection. And they said, okay. Uh, they didn't really think we was going to do it. Well, it, we put it on the ground, and we opened it up Friday. That's and exciting. It's working, Very exciting. It's working great. Good. But you know that that you talk about relationships. The reason there was no, it's I laughed because it's his relationship with Textot. Every project that he's done like this has been a success. So it's he, you know, we can always point to look, you know, we have a great track record here. Charlie knows what he's doing, and they're like, yeah, you know, he does. So there wasn't a huge amount. They of, trust you. They trust I your judgment. I think they do. And that's really what matters. Yeah. You know, for 
the community, the people that live out here, right. and it doesn't matter whether you live in Precinct 2 or not. You're traveling through it, whether you're commuting to go to work or, or well, yeah, you don't, a business you don't. or whatever it is, you want all the roads to be easily accessible and efficient so that you don't have to wait forever or even if there's an emergency you can get through you don't correct? stop at the, at the precinct two boundary you you drive all over the county i mean that's that's how you have to look at this well i can't yeah just, as someone who does i can appreciate that you can't just say well that's not mine no uh, no it's all yours it's yeah. all yours just everybody work together yeah. to make it accessible yeah you know and and that's how i try to look at every, every decision i make every time i try to do something number one is it good for precinct two it has to be, but is it good for the county as a whole? That's that's how you have to look at everything I do. I, I don't look at it any different. Uh, I keep repeating myself. It, I, I don't want to. I don't want to do. Do you something. think that's unique? I really do. I don't want to. I don't want to say. Well, that's so and so's. I don't want no part of it. But you do you think? Do that. Without pinpointing. Yes, I do. Do you think yes. that you, what you're saying is unique to? Um, the commissioner's court that everybody doesn't necessarily and i'm not really trying to put you on the spot i'm just saying i think it's a great way a good perspective that what you do affects others in the community yes. so if precinct one or precinct three or precinct four or whatever they can't just look out for themselves they need to look at it as a joint venture how it affects everybody who lives in montgomery county right right and i think that I think that we are unique in Precinct 2 that we, we go above and beyond whenever we do that. The, some, of them, some of them may not do as much as we do. Some of them may say, that's his, let him deal with it. Right. And I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes I don't want to, look, I don't know how that's going to turn out. That may not be the thing to do. You let him get comfortable with it, and maybe he'll come to me. And so you have disagreements, and that's okay. That. You don't have to agree with everybody all but the time. But you have some people down in, say, the township that are trying to keep me from doing roads I outside, of, my, <laughs> outside yeah. of their boundary. Yeah. Now, that's not what I do. I do not like that. Right. Uh, and I'm not trying to do anything. I'm trying to take care of mobility and make things. That's your main job. Safer and better quality of life. So that's to that effect, you're passionate about what you're doing. I'm very passionate. You love it. So that means that you're here to stay for a little while or you want to be anybody that's uh, look <laughs> anyway. i'm gonna say this <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, there's been there's been some rumors that i've heard that i'm sick uh you I've don't look ill that i've got something <laughs> that i'm not gonna be able to run again i'm not gonna be able to do my job i'm here to say i'm not going away even when this gigs up i'm here I'm you not live going here to, i'm this not is your going community. anywhere but I am running again, and I'm running as hard as I can. Okay. And uh, <laughs> it's there's, official. There's absolutely nothing wrong with me, other than I got a little high blood pressure. But uh, we're here to stay. <laughs> Do you have a as stressful as, job? <laughs> as long as the people will vote us in and, and have us, we're here. Well, okay. So uh, you've been in office six years. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. This I'm in my seventh year. You're yeah. in your seventh year. Wow. We got a lot done in seven years. I promise you. You go back and look at what we've done in seven years, you'd be amazed. Uh, not only the road projects, but just some of the things we've done. You know, the Forensic Center has been kicked down the road for 25 years. Well, guess what? We figured out a way to get it done, and I took the charge on that, took the lead on that. It's being built now. Uh, the District 4 substation over in Magnolia, I've been hearing about that for 30 years. We need some place over here where our guys don't have to drive all the way to Conroe. Well, guess what? I took the lead on that, and it, it's going to open either by the end of this year or January of next year. That keeps our law enforcement where they need to be, quality of life, safety. That's, sure, that's absolutely. What it's all about. And there's Actually, a lot more coming down. It's just the opposite of defund the police because by Charlie mm -hmm. championing yes. that project, <laughs> he literally got 900 hours of policing that was, was being spent in transporting driving back and forth and processing so you gain it's more than that because it is that, that was just the, no that was just that was just for magnolia so yeah. it increases the uh safety and well, protection of the people that live so, out there so right now today margie uh one of the agencies uh, has to arrest somebody they have to leave and they could be at robert cemetery road in spring creek it's going to take them two hours to get from there to conroe to take somebody to jail it's going to take another 45 minutes to do the paperwork 
Then it's going to take him another 45 minutes because he's going back to his office, not to Robert Simpson. So he's got four hours, three and a half, four hours tied up with one guy. So now we open up this substation. He arrests somebody. He takes him up there, does the paperwork, books him into that holding facility. So you have your own holding facility And there. he's back That's on the road cool. within 35, yeah. 40, at the hour at the most. And he's never left his, his, area. his area. Yeah. And then the sheriff's. Uh, it's, it's a sheriff's substation. He's going to man the holding facility and man the facility huh. uh, twice a day. Uh, a van will come pick up whoever's here, and they'll transport them to the, the county jail in Conroe. Hmm. So it's a, it's a so it's much more efficient. Oh, it's a home run for everybody. Oh, well, and he did a, another one. Uh, we did a reorganization of how we uh, uh, on our uh, on our barn where everyone is, mm-hmm. where they're officed out of. And we ended up with an old supervisor's office, which <clears throat> excuse me housed four supervisors. And Charlie said, "You know, it would be a good thing." And I'm like, "Tell me." He said, "Have you ever seen the closet DPS has to work out of?" up here and i said no i haven't he says literally it's a closet oh, like our so office right here charlie well <laughs> it wasn't this big. <laughs> it wasn't this big uh-uh. and so charlie said i'm going to work on getting them an office giving them that office and now we have of course these poor guys are going between the border and austin for the special sessions but it gave us uh, they work out of his office now we've got a sergeant uh from the dps uh, we hope we get a lieutenant and a and a what they call a unit out here, uh, and I think we will because of what we've given them and, and and we're trying to help them. You know, we I've always seen DPS in a closet about this big because they don't have a place to go, they don't have Wi-Fi, they don't they don't. You can't work with that. You can't. I've seen them park without in front all of, the essentials. I've seen them park in front of the high school trying to get on their <laughs> Wi-Fi or in front My of gosh. city hall. So they That's can true. have it. So it's we true. opened it up, and now there's a sergeant and six troopers out of that office yeah and if we can get a unit there we'll have a lieutenant and a sergeant and maybe 10 or 12 i don't know if it'll ever happen but i've got the place for them to do it if they want to well that's that's, good that's what we need so you're very productive yes in your role do you work every day every day 24 (laughs) hours seven days a week and you of course live in magnolia yes you live in that area how long have you lived there since 1971 I was 14 years old when I moved out there. I'm like I'm like most people in the in the uh, west side uh, of uh, Montgomery County. Uh, we all came from the north side of Houston. I came from Fulton and Airline uh, in the north side of Houston, and I can go to homeowners meetings right now. And there's if there's 200 people in the room, and we do our thing, and and uh, we get through with our questions and answers. Sometimes I just ask, how many people are here from the north side of Houston? Hmm. And I guarantee there's 70 people. Mm-hmm. If there's 200, there's 70 of them. Wow. Are from the north side somewhere. Mm-hmm. So. Hmm. That's Interesting. Kind of, that's kind of cool too, as far as I'm concerned. Of course, yeah. of course. So Magnolia has a lot of really good things, and I I like the open space out there the best. You know, it's very nice. So a lot of that open space is uh, <laughs> going away. is going away with about twelve thousand acres that's under development right now. You know, uh, I don't know if you've heard the numbers about twelve to twenty thousand homes within the next five to seven years, but that's true. That's coming. H E B broke ground. Yeah, I know H E B, and I know there's some other uh, things about to happen that will be released soon. Yes, that'll. Um, offer more affordable housing right for families yes. which is a good thing yes it's a very good thing as well as so. uh, recreation mm-hmm yeah we can't quite talk about that yet okay we there's a lot have, of things we can't talk we about. have some good news that we we want to talk about we'll we talk just, about it as soon as we can it, it was in the next 60 okay. days i promise you good. and it's big good news. well then you have to come back and share the I news will. so let's talk I'm about, about that. let's talk about your event okay i'm having a Campaign kickoff event. Because uh, you're still here and you're healthy yeah, and you're so, moving forward. Yes, yeah, so I okay. wouldn't be having a campaign <laughs> event. If I wasn't going to try to run again, I wouldn't be having a campaign event. But I'm having it on September the 30th at Magnolia High School, like we always have. And we'll have our baked potato, stuffed baked potato dinner. Uh, we won't do a whole big live auction, but we'll have a few live au- uh, auctions. What I'm trying to do is let the public know. I'm not it's an going announcement. away. I'm it's not more of sick. an announcement, I'm correct? I'm here, and I want the local people to come say, well, he is still here, and we're still running. You want them to see you. Yes. I want everybody <laughs> to come out and enjoy and have a good time. Okay. It's that's not going to be a whole lot of September pressure. September 30th. Yes. 
Magnolia and High Magnolia School. High School. Um, and the road should be easy to travel to get there. Hey, it's all open now. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it'll be a celebration party. Is that a Friday or a Thursday? I can't Thursday. remember. That's a a Thursday. 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 Okay, so put it on your calendar. And uh, so that's coming forward. And anything else you want to talk about? Good news? Uh, I think maybe some of the good news. Uh, I knew we wasn't going to get into the budget a whole lot. But I would like to say that, uh, you know, it's a it's another tight budget year and we trimmed the budget back and you know last year we trimmed about three cents off of our tax rate well we did it again this year so we knocked about six cents off the tax rate in the last two years uh it was a very interesting budget year and i'm sure next year will be another very interesting budget year but uh, those I, things aren't fun it's not fun but uh, but it's things that you have to do and i, and I think you got to have a plan. We did We did what we were trying to do. We made it work, and we figured out a way to make it work. We cut some of the money out of the budget. I don't have all the numbers in front of me. That numbers sometimes just get in the way. But I think we did what we could to take care of the citizens of Montgomery County, and uh, we will continue to take care of the citizens of Montgomery County. We didn't cut any services, so we were able to cut the tax rate, keep the services there, and take care of the people. So I think well, I know that uh, some of the nonprofits still will be getting funding. Yes, and I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't agree with some of the folks that say we shouldn't be funding nonprofit. There's a reason they're there. Okay. There's a, There's reason a very big the reason budget. there for me. Yeah. Because if they don't do it, guess who's going to have to do it? it they're not going to go away. It, the people they're serving, we're going to have to take care of it somehow, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So I would a whole lot rather fund these guys and let them take the money we get and leverage it for all the money they get. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not saying we don't want to deal with them, but they know what the, the key they word know is more leveraging. The, it. That's right. You know, that's because, right. and I like that you said that because it doesn't mean that's where they get all their supplemental funding. It means they use that to get other funding. And if you don't support your own, then why should outside sources that's right. externally support right. it? So they leverage that let's say Meals on Wheels, they they take the, those funds to get federal funds right. and things like that. That's right. Because the federal government will go, well, if your local government doesn't support you that knows you, why should we? That's right. So that's the power of using that it's in sure. the it's county. That's why it's so important. And it brings, you know, we all pay federal taxes, so you're bringing your tax money back to our community. Right. To the community, Which is Correct. really, I mean, yeah, we have a global perspective for our country, but I'd like to see our tax dollars come back to this county. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely a great where it matters to most. This is where you see it. That's right. You know, take care you know? of your home before you, you know. Absolutely. You know, so. So I want to uh, mention that you can find out more about your projects because I know you've been doing some great videos as well. Mm -hmm. And they're on Facebook at uh, commprecinct2.org. Is that right, Bruce? And you could also no, go to... No, she didn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. She's, she's, she's giving up on asking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not going to ask you things <laughs> out of your comfort level. Well, and that's so, one of them. He's <laughs> yeah. actually gotten really comfortable with the, uh, you know, try. They all look at Charlie like he's a rock, and it's not. The guy, he, he progresses. He's, he's willing he to He progresses. Listen. That's he good. He does. He's willing to listen when we talk to him about <laughs> Charlie. That's great. It was done that way for years. This is how it's done now. The We're moving forward a little and bit. he doesn't have a meltdown, and he's, he's great. Yes, so. I have noticed that. You don't seem as uncomfortable talking no, he's about He's been very this. cooperative yeah. and, so and moving forward. you're stretching yourself. That's good. So, also, uh, I mean, you can go to mctx.org and go on to Precinct 2 and find you that's another way to find it easier and it's comm precinct org, but it's really easy to just google this stuff and go on <laughs> facebook and look for charlie commissioner charlie riley and you can find it too and it I mentioned that because you do have some really good videos of mm -hmm. the work that's completed things that you're working on right now and uh you know it tells the story you know, right. so uh, again, September 30th is his uh, relaunch campaign <laughs> party. He's alive, all that, <laughs> and uh, at uh, Magnolia High School, and uh, that's that's it for today. So special thanks to our sponsor sponsors, Team Sinisi Real Estate and Roger Stein Chiropractics. Uh, I am Margie Taylor, and we appreciate both of you coming on to tell the story today. Thanks, thanks for having us. Thank, thank you.